Okie dokie. So, for the past three months, I've basically used this M4 MacBook Air every single day whenever I leave the apartment to go to a coffee shop or a co working space to work. So, in this video, let's talk about how the M4 Air is still holding up after three months of usage and how it compares to other Apple Silicon chips like the M1 Pro or the M4 Max. Now, quickly, let's go over the specs of my machine. So, I got the 15 inch M4 MacBook Air with a 10 core CPU and a 10 core GPU. It also has 24 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigs of storage. So, the specs are pretty much exactly down in the middle of what you can get with the M4 Air. And as you've already seen in my other videos, it's in the sky blue colorway. People kind of hate on the sky blue color, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. And especially against the white surface like this, it looks amazing. Now, if you're just going about your day in a coffee shop or something, yes, it looks kind of silverish, but at least in this specific environment, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, the first question I want to answer is, does it overheat? Like, I think that's one of the biggest concerns for people when they're trying to decide between the Pro and the Air versions. And as you know, the Air doesn't have any fans because it's not intended to be used under heavy loads. But the issue with the M4 chip is that it's so powerful that it can be used in heavy loads. So that's where the overheating conversation really even stems from. Now, the heaviest workload my laptop usually goes through is when I'm rendering these videos. Like these videos are pretty big. And for example, with my week in the life video, that's 40 minutes long. This happened while I was rendering it. So I press render and at first the GPU usage is basically at 100%, anywhere between 94 and 97%, which is really good. That means that the air can actually utilize the full power of the M4 chip. But after a few minutes, the GPU usage actually drops to around 50% because it's getting too hot and it needs time to cool off. So yeah, the air starts the export strong with 100% chip usage, but because it doesn't have any fans, it starts to heat a bit. And the only way to cool it down is by slowing down the chip, which just means less output. But the funniest thing here is that even while throttling, the M4 air still finished a 40 minute export in 17 minutes. Like, that's pretty damn good, I'll, I'll be honest with y'all. So while yes, the air does throttle if it's under heavy loads for extended periods of time, I'd go as far as saying that most people won't recognize the performance drop in their daily work. Then when it comes to display size, I found myself really enjoying the 15 inch version. Like coming from my 16 inch pros, I don't really feel like this has caused me any issues whatsoever. The 15 inches gives me more than enough screen real estate for programming and editing. Now, of course, if you're a mobile or a web developer, you really need two windows open at the same time so you can see the code editor on the left and all your changes in real time on the right. And even while I'm doing that, I don't feel like I'm cramped with space. The main thing here is, of course, the fact that the screen is only 60 hertz alongside with the overheating this seems to be one of the main criticisms that the air receives and you know i totally get it if you're used to 120 hertz display then it can feel like a downgrade coming to a 60 hertz display but for me personally my main monitor is 60 hertz anyway so i really don't mind the air display but in all fairness most of the time my macbook pro is plugged into my main display anyway so i'm not really getting the full usage of the 120 hertz when it comes to colors i actually find the air to be really good and whenever i export a video and upload it to youtube the colors are the same on my macbook air as they are on my iphone so that's really good because i've had some monitors in the past that the colors were completely different which made working with video and photos extremely extremely difficult and the last thing about the display is that the air goes up to 500 nits of brightness while the pro obviously goes up to 1600 nits of peak brightness with a thousand nits sustained so the pro is much much brighter and if you work next to a window or something, then you might want to get the Pro. But as you can see, I have a window right here behind me. And when I open the MacBook Air, and if I was working just like this, then yes, you can see the windows and the plant very clearly on the reflections. So if you're someone who works with their back face in a window, then this might be an issue for you. Then obviously the best part about the MacBook Air is its design. It's so thin, it's so light. The 15 inch version I have weighs only 3.3 pounds or around 1.5 kg. And the 13 inch version is even lighter at 2.7 pounds or around 1.2 kg. Of course, it's only one and a half pound difference between the 15 inch Air and the 16 inch Pro. But trust me, when you go throughout the whole day with your laptop in your backpack, the 16 inch Pro starts to feel like a brick and the Air is noticeably lighter. And especially if you're traveling you'll appreciate the lighter weight because some airlines can be a pain in the ass when it comes to weight limits now interestingly the 15 inch air weighs pretty much the same as the 14 inch pro so if you're considering a 15 inch air then i'd also think about the 14 inch pro and of course i've made a video breaking down the differences between the air and the pro model so definitely check that out now something i really don't like about the air models is the port support like this is a big miss for me personally because it only has the charging port 
two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a headphone jack. If this was my main machine at home, then it would be a bit of an issue for me because first of all, my monitor instantly takes one of the Thunderbolt ports and then I need to plug in my microphone, which also takes another port and that's all the ports gone. So if I wanted to charge my keyboard or my mouse or even just attach an external SSD to the laptop, then it wouldn't really be possible without a dock. But the issue with getting a dock or a USB hub with the MacBook Air is that at that point, you're starting to approach the pricing of the 14 inch Pro models. And I mean, it's a much tougher sell to recommend the Air over the 14 inch Pro at that point. So this is really something you need to ask yourself. Are you planning on using an external display? Are your keyboard and mouse wireless? Or are you planning on having external storage connected to the laptop? By the way, Apple, it would be amazing if you just took one of these Thunderbolt ports and put it on the right side of the laptop. Another thing to keep in mind is that the Air doesn't have a HDMI port here, which I actually use quite a lot on my Pro machine when I'm hosting friends over and we're watching a fight or something. With all that said, if you plan on using just the laptop by itself, then you'll be more than fine with the port selection on the MacBook Air. Though for photographers or videographers, just go with the Pro because the Air doesn't have a SD card slot and we all know how annoying carrying an adapter everywhere is. And I mean, if you work in the creative field, then you'll probably appreciate the Pro display as well. Then what everybody wants to know about is the performance. Look, talk about the performance and don't worry, I got y'all. So when I start my day, I usually open my browser ID and have a couple of containers running, which is why I wanted to see how fast each of these laptops can spin up hundred different containers. Obviously this depends a lot on your internet speed if you have to pull images, etc. But I thought this was a fun way to test the disk IO and stuff. Here the M1 Pro and the M4 Air were almost identical at around 14 seconds while the m4 max was over twice as fast at only six seconds but i think the interesting part here is seeing the m1 pro match up so well against the base m4 chip this isn't something you would actually do in real life but it's a cool test against the m1 pro and the m4 max also something fun i wanted to test out is how quickly the m4 air can sort out 50 million random parameters versus the M1 Pro and the M4 Max. And this actually showcases perfectly how the absence of fans can affect the performance when it comes to multi-core tasks. All right, I got two different versions of Quicksort here. One is multi-core and the other one is single core. And the difference is basically just that the single core one runs Quicksort on the sample array, whereas the multi-core one splits the sample array into multiple chunks depending on how many cores the laptop has, and then sorts those chunks individually, and at the end it merges them together. And yeah, here you can see when I run the multi-core program, all of these performance cores are starting to get hot, like super hot, over 100 degrees Celsius, which is kind of wild. Whereas when I run the single core program, only one of the cores gets hot at a time, and then the air can just switch which core it uses for the task whenever the current core gets too hot. So for single core tasks specifically, there really isn't a big difference between the A and the Pro model. For the single core performance, it was pretty much the exact same for the M4A and the M4 Max, both coming in at around 100 seconds. So no heating issues there because the A can just switch the core that it's using for the task. Interestingly though, for the M1 Pro, the same exact process took almost double at 192 seconds. So as you can see, for the single core performance, there really isn't any difference which chip you go for if it's in the same generation. But then again, generation over generation, there's improvements. The biggest difference for these laptops comes with the multi-core performance. So here the base M4 chip was able to complete the quick sort in 25 seconds, which is around a 4x improvement compared to the single core performance, and the M1 Pro at 32 seconds, which is a 6x increase to its single core performance. And of course the M4 Max absolutely dusts this benchmark and finished the multi-core sort in only 14 seconds, which is almost a 7x increase compared to single core performance. And as you can see, the performance jump from single core to multi-core tasks is much larger on the Pro versions compared to the Air. Of course, the M4 Max has 16 cores compared to the 10 in the M4 Air and the M1 Pro, which explains the biggest jump in the M4 Max. But secondly, with the multi-core test, we can clearly see the M4 Air being held back by its thermals compared to the Pros, which have the fans so they can cool off the chip. And you can expect similar behavior in your daily tasks, like running tests on a big repo in parallel or a linter or even a build. So if you do those type of things a lot in your daily work, then it might be worth it to go with the Pro just so you can save on time when it comes to those multi-core tasks. But I must say that this is only really an issue if you're working on a big repo with hundreds or thousands of tests, for example. And if you're a student or someone who programs for fun, then this isn't gonna be an issue for you. Then let's talk about the editing performance because this is what surprised me the most. Like I mentioned, the Air exported my 40 minute long 4K 10-bit SLUC 3 footage video 
in just 17 minutes and that same video took the M4 Max around 9 minutes which don't get me wrong is a big difference but the performance with the air is just ridiculously good here. Alright so I got the video open here on the timeline and as you can see when I'm scrolling through the timeline there's pretty much no lag and even when I jump to a random spot and start playing it instantly starts playing without any lag. So that's actually pretty good and I got the timeline resolution on 4K. But I think a big factor here is the RAM that my laptop has. When I'm editing, I'm using a lot of RAM. And if you're somebody who's going for the base model, then I just suggest dropping timeline resolution straight to 1080p and you're gonna be golden. But with 16 gigs of RAM and keeping the timeline resolution at 4K, if you have some heavy footage, it's gonna be a struggle. Then as the last performance test, I wanted to see how the M4A stacks up against the M4 Max with local LLM performance. And here we're mainly looking at the tokens per second, which basically tells you how fast the model is outputting text. And I'm just gonna use the DeepSeq R1 7 billion parameter model, but you can run the 14 billion parameter model on the Air 2 with the expense of some tokens per second if you got the 16 gigabyte version. And with this setup, the M4 Air was outputting anywhere between 18 to 20 tokens per second, whereas the M4 Max delivered around 70. But to be fair, the M4 Max has so much more RAM that it isn't really a fair comparison, but it gives you a decent idea of the air. So the performance on this laptop is incredible and pretty much whatever you throw at it is gonna get it done. The only real question here is that do you mind waiting a little bit longer when the air throttles in multi-core tasks compared to the pros which can just cool off the chip. But the throttling is really gonna be an issue only when the air is under heavy load for extended periods of time. And that's why the editing performance is so good because it's kind of like bursts of smaller tasks instead of just one longer tasks, if that makes any sense. So the air has time to cool off in between those small bursts. Also for the storage, I just checked, I've only used 170 gigabytes of storage and I have all of my apps installed and everything. So this is gonna be a bit of a hot take, but I think that most people are gonna be just fine with the base 256 gigs of storage. Now look, if you're gonna be installing games or storing large media files on your laptop, then obviously it's not gonna be enough. If you need extra storage for things like media and stuff, then highly recommend you go for one of these instead. I think this costs the same exact amount as the internal storage bump for the MacBooks. And this has two terabytes of storage instead of 256 gigabytes. So with external storage, you're just getting so much more value for your money. Of course, with the downside of having to connect the external storage with a Thunderbolt to your laptop. Then for the battery, of course, Apple is famous for having amazing battery life with their laptops. And look, the Air is no exception here. It's hard to give one size fits all answer here because this depends so much on what you're doing and whether you're using full brightness or not. Like for example, if I'm editing at 100% brightness, I only get around four to five hours of usage from my laptop. But if I bump down the brightness to let's just say 60%, then I can get not exactly double, but almost double the amount of screen time from the laptop. And for programming, I find the battery lasts even longer. But I'ma keep it real, having the screen on full brightness is just a different experience and that's what I do 99% of the time. All right, then the conclusion. I'd say the M4A is pretty much the perfect machine for people who don't mind the 60 hertz display, especially if you're fine with the 13 inch option. Like I cannot think about a laptop that's better value for money that's out there in the marketplace currently. But the thing is, if you find yourself going for the 15 inch version and you see yourself bumping up the specs and you see that price starting to creep up, then please heavily consider the 14 inch Pro instead because you can get quite similar specs for not that much amount of money and get all the benefits that come with the Pro laptop. And like I already said, if you work with photos or video, then I don't think this is the perfect laptop for you, just for the simple fact that the SD card slot is missing. And also I feel like in creative fields, you're gonna appreciate the features that the Pro offers more. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the M4 MacBook Air and I'll see you in the next one.